As these central banks continue to de-dollarize, they realize that inflation has been chosen over austerity the way that all governments have. What I'm trying to say to you is this, you you add that kind of money, you're talking gold that could easily be up above $10,000 because 80 billion pushed it up here to 2,600 and change with virtually no U.S. participation. And I think that you are seeing and will see kind of like a hockey stick, right? Where the acceleration in de-dollarization accentuates. Yeah, in every metric, um, gold is at all-time highs, but maybe the the, the flawed logic is that it, it, it should be a whole hell of a lot higher. The UBS says gold has risen by 29% this year, consistently breaking records on the way up. Meanwhile, the metal has risen above our long-held year-end target of 2,600 bucks ahead of schedule. And according to the World Gold Council, as I mentioned to you, it has historically rallied as much as 10% in the first six months after a Fed cut. We now expect gold to reach 2750 per ounce by the end of 2024 and to 2900 per ounce by the third quarter of 25. Pretty significant, but not as significant as Goldman Sachs, who is talking about right now in the fourth quarter of 2025, by the end of the third quarter in 2025, $3,000 gold. By the end of the year in 2025, $3,080 an ounce. Um, and this is elevated from $27 to $2,900 an ounce. Again, these banks are coming out and saying, yeah, you know, we're moving to 3000 bucks an ounce. And Goldman Sachs has said that they're being inundated with, with precious metals requests on their trading desks, uh, which is a very, very, very big deal, obviously. And, and, and it is being evidenced by the first time in two and a half years, we see an uptick in ETF holdings. And so as ETF holdings pick up, as the Fed pivots and lowers rates, probably another 50 basis points here in November, um, this is just rocket fuel for gold, which has done what it's done, again, rallying 29% and 47% since 2022 when, when the, we saw this divergence in 2022 where the ETF started to outflow in the U.S. and gold started to go up, really. And so this 47% gain since 2022, as the public has not been involved in it, with positive real yield and, and a strong dollar, now you see dollar kind of hanging right at that 100 mark on the on the Dixie and could very well fall from there and, and drop a little bit or maybe a lot, <clears throat> of course. And then you see that the, 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 the yields coming down and now the ETFs ticking up. This is all huge. And to see Goldman and UBS say these things um, is, is, again, very, very significant. They're acquiescing to the reality that, you know, again, you can only manipulate a market over an extended period of time done again by pushing it in the direction that it is going. And that is the key that maybe these banks realize it's as dumb as a mud wall like Bank of America to be naked short in a market where the rest of the world is voraciously accumulating metal to the point where just in the month of August, 8.1% of all the silver held that's available for delivery and the LBMA was delivered 8.1% over 25 million ounces in the month of August. So it's accelerating the acquisition of gold. And it's also being done in a manner to not upset the apple cart, as we talked about last week with 160 metric tons purchased by by Saudi Arabia, but not disclosing it the way they're supposed to to the IMF because they don't want to upset the big kahuna, the United States. And yet they're playing both sides of this of this this game. Um, ultimately, if you just put all of these things together and realize that the commercial banks and the central banks, who are the most collectively well-informed and well-financed traders in the world, are telling you where this is going. And if you don't pay attention to the Goldman Sachs report or the UBS report, where the hell do you find it, right? Where are you gonna find it on the mainstream? Are you listening to the mainstream who isn't saying a word about any of this? It's not easy to find and read through these analyst reports for UBS and Goldman Sachs. It sucks reading it, to be honest with you. And they're 25 pages of a bunch of mumbo jumbo. And then they say, yeah, gold's going to, to 3000 by the end of the year. But if you only relied upon and that you consider yourself very well read by reading the Wall Street Journal, watching Fox News 
and paying close attention to the markets, you are missing this completely and totally. There is your massive contrarian indicator. Not only are the biggest boys in the world telling you, yeah, this is where it's going, but you can't find it unless you dig. Um, I don't know. To me, it's it's a massive contrarian indicator, and I would say that's probably selling it short from where it ultimately goes. The central banks of the world have purchased 1,250 metric tons of gold, which is worth about $80 billion. <clears throat> and when we talk about a government that, by its own estimate, will take another $22 trillion in debt, over the coming decade just to keep the lights on, so to speak, to roll over the obligations that we have uh, and to continue to fund our spending habits. Well, that's an awful lot of money. And, I, and, I, and I'm sure that those are, are severe concerns. But think about this. Um, it, in other words, if the central banks were to purchase, uh, let's say, well, 5% hold right now in U.S. dollars, just converting 5% would be another three to 400 billion in purchases. Now, an $80 billion infusion pushed gold up to its all time high. At the same time, we have a strong dollar, we have positive real yields and, and outflows out of the ETFs. What happens if they just convert 5% of their dollar holdings, and, and it seems that this is a, has been a trend that's been accelerating. Now, granted, that's three to four hundred billion dollars. That's five times what they bought over the last couple of years. But what I'm getting at is that as as these central banks continue to de-dollarize, they realize that inflation has been chosen over austerity, the way that all governments have. What I'm trying to say to you is this, you you add that kind of money, you're talking gold that could easily be up above $10,000 because 80 billion pushed it up here to 2,600 and change with virtually no US participation. And I think that you are seeing and will see kind of like a hockey stick, right? Where the acceleration in de-dollarization accentuates. And I really do believe that that's a as crazy as it sounds to me, a conservative estimate. I can't imagine that all you would see is 5% of the 8 trillion in US dollar holdings that these central banks hold around the globe would be converted to gold. I think that number will be much more. But 5% would be three to 400 billion injection into gold. And that's five to six times what they've already bought in the last two and a half years, which has been the driving force behind the rise in gold. I don't know. I happen to, it's rocket fuel waiting to happen. I really truly do. And and uh, this is a trend that has done nothing but accelerate. Every time we see a Fed cut, gold has rallied as much as 10% in the six months after the first Fed cut. So we just saw the first Fed cut. We're seeing increased central bank demand. Um, and we're now beginning to see the ETF start to tick up. I mean, in terms of you try to lay out an argument for a bullish case for gold, I don't know their path, and that is one of, of inflation. And so <clears throat> when you talk about inflation, sanctioning, um, all of the things that these central banks are thinking of, not to mention the BRICS and, the, and their gold-backed settlement currency, which again has been, has been reconfirmed that this indeed is real and will be discussed in the meeting here in the, in the next three weeks we could see much higher prices over the next six to 12 months, uh, especially as we are now banking another 50 basis point rate cut. At least that's what the smart money thinks will happen. So yeah, in every metric, um, gold is at all time highs, but maybe the 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 flawed logic is that it, it, it should be a whole hell of a lot higher, that it's been suppressed for so long that these numbers that we are all awestruck over are really well short of the mark just because it hasn't been able to reach its real price due to the massive shorting on both the LBMA and on COMEX. Maybe, just maybe, all of these other assets that have reached such stratospheric highs and gold and so kind of painting a picture, allowing most people, including maybe even you and I, to sell short where gold and silver really ought to be and where it is ultimately going.